Um, Randy Avera, a NASA engineer, former NASA engineer, who was involved in the uh, shuttle program during the uh, Challenger days. Uh, let's help folks understand. When they say foam, this foam is pretty dense stuff. I, I don't have. I used to have some. I can't find it, unfortunately. But the foam is pretty dense. And at the speeds we're talking about uh, on ascent, rising to orbit. Uh, so much as a raindrop can cause trouble and can break these tiles, can it not? Installation of the spray-on foam insulation, it's called, or SOFI, S-O-F-I. Uh, that's a, a procedure that's done uh, after the construction of the basic tank. Then the tank is transported to Kennedy Space Center on a barge and then integrated into the shuttle stack in the vehicle assembly building. But uh, any, any object that could hit it could do damage, but there's also the preparation of the surface that the insulation is applied to, any contamination there or any procedures that are not correctly done could create either delaminations, separations, or defects. Okay, let's, um, uh, I've, I've sort of got ahead of the game here. I'd like to get your impressions from a technical mind from what you saw there. First of all, I was impressed as Lou and John Zarella were, was with the stark contrast to 17 years ago. Uh, NASA really being forthcoming here, uh, impressive um, sense of laying the cards on the table, answering questions uh, at length. Um, what did you draw from that, uh, that left wing issue, those, those sudden, uh, that sudden loss of information from those sensors? Well, the thing to remember, uh, the loss of data, as NASA had indicated in the press conference, uh, it appears in one way to be working from the trailing edge of the wing forward. Uh, for example, if you have a, a disturbance on the leading edge of the wing, that can actually trip the boundary layer, the aerodynamic boundary layer close to the surface of the tiles, and actually cre create a thermal effect much further back. So what NASA is very correct so, in So doing, a, an un, a unpredicted disturbance of air which could kick up some tiles, could cause a problem and, and perhaps put enough force in those tiles to knock some loose? What I'm saying specifically is an aerodynamic disturbance that creates a, an aerothermal application of heat. I see, okay. That could exceed the limits of the tile system. So and there are also spacers between the tiles, which if they become dislodged could allow aerodynamic flow to get in between the tiles. So in other words, kind of a blowtorch effect on a specific spot on the shuttle and not able to withstand it, exceeding the parameters. Correct. Okay. What, what should, uh, other, any other general impressions you can share with us right now? Well, certainly the loss of that data is, is not at what NASA would call a nominal or normal uh, occurrence. And it certainly has uh, evidentiary nature to its existence. And uh, I believe in comparing the activities of today that NASA is doing to that of 1986, I believe they're on track. Uh, the uh, deputy administrator of NASA uh, was one of our leaders in what we called the red team, the investigation team of NASA engineers. He's former astronaut Fred Gregory, and I believe he will be working a lot of these issues to bring the lessons learned from 1986 forward and to implement them as starting today, procedures that are in place and real-time decisions that are going to have to be made. What's your, what's your gut sense of um, where, where the uh, program is right now? In my book, The Truth About Challenger, which is uh, being printed as we speak and in, available in about two weeks, I've, I've detailed this. that. Uh, this is about science. This is exploration, research, and development. And we have a very unlimited, bright future. Uh, science, the, the kind of science we do and what we know about science is reflective of who we are as human beings. I say in the book that we are one human race on this planet and that our, our endeavors to learn in school and to have good jobs and to do good work, uh, as Gus Grissom used to say, just do good work. Uh, in that spirit, uh, we have a bright future ahead, and anyone that is in school right now, a young person, a uh, middle-aged or older person, uh, we have a lot of national resources and people who have done work in our country that, that we've just basically dismissed from, from jobs because of downsizing. These are national resources we need to bring back to inspire people to do the great science that is yet to be done.
Randy Avera, thank you very much for your insights. Randy's a former NASA engineer, was there in the dark days of Challenger, and before and after that as well. Thank you very much uh, for being with us. Uh, and at that, at this point, uh, we'll tell you that uh, we're just, even after a long day, just getting started on this story. This is a story that we will be telling you about for many, many months to come. Uh, on the near-term horizon tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, we'll have a special report. Uh, I'll be joined by uh, Judy Woodruff and Wolf Blitzer and Lou Dobbs for that. Larry King Live, 9 p.m. Eastern. He'll have uh, several guests related to this. And then an additional special report, 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Uh, with Anderson Cooper, Judy Woodruff, uh, Lou Dobbs, and Wolf Blitzer. That's all coming up here on CNN, so please stay with us for the latest and comprehensive information on the tragic loss of the Space Shuttle Columbia on her 28th flight, the 113th shuttle mission, 16 days seemingly flawless ending uh, with a sudden and seemingly inexplicable disintegration over northeast Texas. I'm Miles O'Brien. Let's send it up to Judy Woodruff in Washington. Thank you, Miles. And so hard to believe that it was only about 49 miles uh, overhead, 49 miles over the surface of the Earth. You think about the distance from one place to another on Earth. That's how far up the shuttle was when it apparently exploded and fell apart. And I just want to chime in and say I agree with what Miles said. I was struck by the candor that we heard from the NASA officials, the shuttle program manager, Ron Didamore, at one point at the end saying, somewhere along the line, we missed something. But, he said, I guarantee you, we're going to fix it. Well, in a tragedy of this magnitude, you can imagine President uh, Bush is involved. He was called first thing this morning as soon as the White House Chief of Staff uh, got a sense of what was going on. Our White House correspondent, Suzanne Malveaux, is with me now. Suzanne, it has been a full day and a very, very tough day for this president. Certainly, Judy. As you know, one of the most difficult jobs of the president is really to try to rally the country together to help comfort them in these times of tragedy, that one of those days for this president today, uh, a day of mourning, a day of reflection as well. The president saying uh, to the victims' families that the entire nation grieves with you. Uh, president Bush found out uh, just after 9 o'clock when he was at Camp David, he was told by his uh, chief of staff about the, uh, about the tragedy, and uh, later today the president ordered, he issued a proclamation that all flags and federal buildings be lowered to half staff. Uh, that happened just after 1 o'clock here at the White House. When the president first found out when he was at Camp David, we were told that he decided that it would be better to monitor the situation here at the White House. He quickly uh, came to the White House. That is where in the cabinet room he made his uh, national address to the American people. I'm quoting, saying a couple of things here, saying that we can pray safely that they are home, the men and women who assumed great risk in the service to all of humanity. He went on to say that it was a cause for which they died. We'll continue our journey into space. We'll go on. In an age when space flight has come to seem almost routine, it is easy to overlook the dangers of travel by rocket and the difficulties of navigating the fierce outer atmosphere of the Earth. These astronauts knew the dangers and they faced them willingly knowing they had a high and noble purpose in life. Because of their courage and daring and idealism, we will miss them all the more. And Judy, we are told by senior administration officials that he made a very difficult call, a conference call to the families of the victims. They were at the Kennedy Space Center this afternoon. He called and he said, I'm going to quote here, that we express our love and appreciation for all those who died today. I want the loved ones to know there are millions of Americans praying for you, including me and Laura. He goes on to say that it's an incredibly tough day for you. May God bless you all. And then he says, I wish I was there to hug, cry, and comfort you right now. God bless you all. God bless. We're then told that 
those who were in the room with the president. He was standing uh, at his desk in the Oval Office. They said he, that he was quite somber, that he left. He went to the residence, excused himself, went to the residence for some time, and then came back to be briefed by his advisors for more formal meetings. We are also told as well that the president did make a condolence call to Israeli's Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, as you know, one of the victims, one of the astronauts, an Israeli citizen. He also returned some calls uh, for those who were offering their condolences from world leaders, uh, leaders from Mexico, France, Russia, and Canada, just to name a few. Judy. Suzanne, I know at the White House uh, they're monitoring uh, uh, this uh, across many uh, spectra, if you will, uh, looking at the military.